Hey folks, welcome to episode two of Inside EPL podcast. A slightly different look today. We're going to play around with this probably for a while. Try some different stuff. Why yeah, not? until we get it right. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's better than was, and it'll get better as we go through this. Yes. Longer we do this. So yeah. Yes, and thanks yeah. to everyone for tuning in on the first episode. Really appreciate the support. Yeah, and the subscribers. Yeah, did it was nice. wasn't expecting it. Great to have it. Did okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. So today we covered the first seven teams in last season's Premier League final table. This week we're going to cover the next five because that gives us three or four for the following week, final week. We're done with the transfers. We're going to revamp a recap on some of the deals that have been done very quickly between last week and this week's episode. And then we're going to get into Brentford, Fulham, Palace, Chelsea, and Wolves. Yeah. Will be our ones for this week yeah. and the deals that they have done. Um How's your week been? Good. I was at a wedding on the weekend. It was good. So, uh, it was very good. Very good. Congratulations, Rowan and Susan. Uh, so the head's still still recovering, but uh, in, in good shape, in good shape. Enjoyed the match today. Uh, United were leads. Johnny Evans back from the dead. Van der Beek back from the dead. Johnny Evans is an interesting one. Yeah. There was a, a video that I believe Everton circulated. Yeah, you were only, telling me this only yeah. a couple of days ago, mm. and it was their first day back in preseason or something like that. And the, the players were training, but one of the coaches could be overheard in the background saying, We have Johnny Evans coming in next week. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, Johnny Evans pops up in a Manchester United team sheet, a team picture today. So, um, fantastic. Yeah. What I will say on that is, a lot of people think it's just him coming back for a bit of training, um, to get himself fit. I don't think so. He signed a short term deal, it's a short term deal, and a lot of people think it's just for the summer and that it's just to get his match fitness up until he finds another club. But rumours are he impressed Ten Hag so much during his just fitness training that he offered him a short-term contract. Mm -hmm. The amount of defenders United have lost, and with the experience Johnny Evans has, yeah. and as a U team product, every United fan is delighted to see him back. Obviously, he's not going to be a starting player. Yeah. But um, I welcome him back. I think he's going to be a great steward to have on the bench. And um, I hope we see him for the rest of the season. Well, you've really got do. Champions League this year? Did yeah. you make? You did, yeah. Third, yeah. So you're gonna need a bigger squad for League Cup matches and FA yeah. Cup games as well. That's where Johnny Evans probably steps in for the, the the earlier matches in the season. Yeah, I mean, we just sold Alex Tellez. Boy is going to be gone. Mm. Maguire is probably going to be gone. Fred, um, Fred, more of a midfielder, but Johnny Evans can he can still do that defensive role if he needs yeah. to. We've lost a heap of defenders. Uh, Jones is gone. You might say they're fringe players. Don't laugh. <laughs> uh, you might say they're fringe players and, you know, you didn't really need them anyway. They were there to be used if we did need them. And Johnny Evans, I think, will fit that role very, very well. So I welcome him back. Fee agreed with Inter Milan for Onana, which mm. would make him the third most expensive goalkeeper in Premier League history of £47 million. Yeah. Pounds. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's going to be a difference? I know we talked a lot last week about the ability to play with your feet and what Ten Hag is looking for coming out yeah. from the back. Is he going to add something to there? Of course, he'll add a lot. We'll be able to actually not just kick the ball to the halfway line and rely on 50-50s to, to get the ball. We'll actually be able to control what we want to do and how we play out. I think there's going to be... <laughs> I've looked at a lot of videos of Onana in the last while. He's a head case, but he's a very controlled head case. There's going to be times where you're slapping yourself in the head. Yep. Yeah and going oh no just like we did with Barthez um but I think he's going to be a bit of crack we've got a mentor in goal and I like a bit of a mentor in goal sometimes he's not the van der Sar calm and cool and collected but you think of Grobelars layman's I think it's someone you guys actually had as a goalkeeper I have the name Steele in my head but it's not I don't know it's uh, Les Seely Les Seely is the exact head case nutball head case great Absolute nut ball. a great head case you need a head case the drummer of the band <laughs> You always need a lunatic. And uh, I think Onana's going to be great. He's basically a, a footballer who can play in nets, which I think is going to be the new mold of footballer, yeah. at least for the next five to ten years. And yeah. um, I can't wait to see him play. I look forward to the next iteration of the next version of football, which was when somebody decides we should go directly from the goal to the other goal. Yeah, you know, maybe. It just goes back in a cycle, back to long ball football. Who knows? It's like fashion. It's just cyclical. It comes in, it goes out. So we'll we'll see what happens. His relationship with Martinez as well is something that I'm – looking yeah. forward to, to seeing yeah. um, and I think there, there, there's going to be huge benefits to that yeah. so uh, you're looking at the backline rebuild Maguire's sort of his captaincy potentially could be leaving the club as a result of that as yeah, well Phil Jones is gone that's two defenders that have gone off the books there could be an yeah. entire rebuild of that backline starting to happen yeah. Um, tell us about it yeah, yeah I think what's going to happen now with United is just to very quickly I don't want to make the whole thing about United mm -hmm. is the whole sh small transfer budget that we've had 120 million they should have more blah 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 mm -hmm. We are only stating we have 120 million while we want to get our big ticket items. Yeah. And we've nearly got all our big ticket items now. Mount, Onana, and then 
this Hoyland kid who we're definitely going to be overpaying for, but that seems to be the fashion with Everyone's young good. players yeah, as well. I, th I think once those three deals are secured, you're going to see about another 100 million come into United in the space of about three weeks with player sales. Yeah. And then we're going to go after those B-list players that we want, like Amrabat, um, maybe some fullbacks to come in or or some centre halves. But I, I, I think United's business is probably only 30% done. I'm expecting another four or five I, I expect most teams to be busy next week. I think next week after the first full week back in pre-season, I think you'll see an awful lot of people move out from clubs next week. Yeah. I think you'll start to see people who aren't sure about their future start to look to move away from clubs. And um, I'm in the championship and there's a, everyone's saying next week's the big week in the championship. Mm. You'll start seeing a huge amount of movement because pre-season yeah. friendlies are starting, people are starting to put together their squads and what they think their squads are going to be. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you'll see them going out. And um, we are going to recap. We've recapped the Manchester United. Arsenal brought in the jury of Timber from Ajax for 40 million euro. Yes, which I'm quite bitter about. Like him? He's a good player, but he's the player we wanted last year. And Van Gaal said he would drop him from the Dutch national team if he went to United. So definitely not bitter about his ex. Can we just get a, a, a petition together to remove Van Gaal from football? Because he just causing everyone problems except for himself he's he's a bit of gas i suppose but it's uh <laughs> durian well. timber he's a very good player he can play all across the back line um i don't see who he ousts from the arsenal back line smith row or not smith row sorry ben white um we told us last week they do need more players in there because when saliba got injured last season the whole thing kind of fell apart a little they bit do yeah. need more, and you can't just move ben white in there and then not have a right back yeah so they need to have they need to I mean, More Ben White. There. Yeah, he was kind of he was kind of doing what Dan Byrne did last season with with Newcastle, just kind of slotted in in the right side because they did they they needed someone the tallest fullback in the league. Yeah, and he did well. He did very, he did well. very well. In fairness to him, so uh, Ben White. Um, you've got Gabriel. You've got Saliba. Then you've got Zinchenko. You've got Tommy Yasu. Um, you've got Kieran Tierney. Who's still there? Who's clearly going to be moved? Has injury issues and is expected to leave. It looks like it, but um, Timber is not going to be going to Arsenal for the guts of forty million quid to sit on the bench. Sit on the bench. So I'm very curious to see where he fits in or who Arsenal may be selling. Yep. But it's uh, it's interesting. But when you look at what City do with their back lines, I think Arsenal are just trying to follow suit. You're on the front foot. You just need footballers. That's it. You can pass the ball. You're not going to be giving up a lot of possessions. So you're not going to give up a lot of chances. And if you're Spend the bulk of your time in the opposition's half. Do you really yeah. need great defenders? Do you just need people that are competent and yeah. fast and basic? Cut yeah. Out. Read the game well more than anything else. And uh, nothing from Man City, nothing from Newcastle, nothing from Liverpool. We're getting to Newcastle more as we get into this. We will be covering Chelsea today. Yay. After pretty much covering <laughs> Chelsea in the entire first part. Impressive. Before we get into all of this, the quality. Because it is a topic. And, and we, we're, <laughs> we're going to get into this in a bit more detail when we start looking at the outs from some clubs and where they've gone. Yeah, we're talking yeah, about yeah. certain clubs in Saudi. But do you think it really is a threat? Yes. Or do you think it's like what the Chinese league did a couple of years ago? Where they brought in a ton of players from Europe for huge money, and then after two years of it not really working, gave up on and packed their bags. The, with it. the Chinese didn't have limitless amounts of money underneath their feet. Is it limitless though? I know it's oil money, but it's in the trillions. It's enough to make a significant enough dent. Do you think? Who did they play against though? Oh, sorry, who, who did they play against? Those six teams do great in the Serie League. There's a Champions League over there as well. They win that Champions League. Who cares about that? Champions Everything League? has to have a starting point, and this is their starting point they will have limitless money money that can't look at what happened golf with live for anyone here who doesn't know what's going on with golf the saudis came in created their own golf league bought about the top 10 players from europe and america and now not whether it goes enough. through but there's been a forced merger um of the these two kind of institutions where the pga probably thought they were never ever going to have to consider something like this and there they are and it's, i think football could go it's the way. guaranteed money isn't it like you look at ian poulter when they're not talking about golf but you look at ian poulter when he went there and in documentary on netflix he says it's generational wealth <laughs> it's not just me it's my kids and their kids and their kids have to kid. money, so. once you get to a certain threshold of wealth yeah, when you're rich you can lose your money when you're wealthy you can maintain and grow it well money makes money that's it. And Paul does not winning any masters or any you no. know majors in the next couple of years. So I think what smart. happens with this Saudi crowd is um they are looking to spend a lot of their money on the biggest institutions in Western sport. And they're making a huge dent in it. It should be said, and I'll be very clear on where I stand on this. It's sport washing. It's a hundred percent sport washing. They did it with wrestling with WWE, they've done it with UFC, they've done it with other things. It's and they have this tagline around them, like Jed is the one that's used for the wrestling one and they have to say this tagline every time they do it the progressive city of Jeddah. every time they say Jeddah, they have to say the progressive city of Jeddah. which let's be honest about it they're not that progressive they not the serious, not the most they have serious uh, restrictions around yeah. uh, marriages there's the whole um, lgbtq problems that are there as well it's 
it is sports washing. It's look how great we are giving all this money and bringing and making this great shiny league. Don't look at the blood. The blood is not there. I get look it. Look at the shiny thing over here. Everything has to start from somewhere. And if people do have issues and problems with, you know, their practices and customs and whatever yeah. that happens over on that side of the world, if they want to ingratiate themselves into the the, the kind of the Western way of doing things, um, who knows? There might be it might pull them out of some of those bad practices. Mm-hmm. Who, who knows it's not for, for for me to kind of comment on um but it has to start somewhere i mean if you want to start kind of really rolling back the clock you want to look at the crusades and what <laughs> people have done in other parts of the world in the name of whatever and yeah. you look at where we are now everyone has a little bit of dirt on their hands it's just recency bias where you can start pointing the finger and say well that's not no. us anymore I'm not forgiving what's going on over there. But... It's a couple of thousand years since the Crusades and civilization has modernized and culture so it cultured itself a little bit more. Exactly. But it got us to not everywhere. It's got us to where we are. Yeah. And who's to say that it can't get them to where they need to go. But again, you could have we could have a five hour podcast on this, but it's worth bringing up and you were right to bring it up. When we first start, when it first started, my initial thought as again, as a follower of a championship club, I'm doing this because it's not going to last. Um, was oh great finally the premier league's been regulated by another country they can't just buy everyone they want to buy anymore there's no genuine competition from genuine big money in yeah. another country that's not just psg yeah you know so that was like oh it's going to regulate the premier league i'm just going to get whoever they want mm-hmm. anymore except it just seems to be players leaving the premier league rather than premier league teams losing out on players it's going to be a mix of both i mean you're going to have i i do i do i see any players in their pump i mean do, does mares leave to go to al hilal if he hadn't won the treble i mean i've won a league with leicester i did the impossible yeah. i've won the treble with city did well not the impossible united showed it was very possible well, a, couple of doubles, uh, yeah. a long time ago uh but uh do you know what i mean he's kind of there's nothing else to prove time for a big fat payday so but I think it will set a precedent where I think you'll find a lot of players who know they're going to be Mitrovic, 28, banging in goals all last season. Peak of his career. Peak of his career with that one out. It's close anyway. But it's time, close. But I should date stamp this as well. This is Friday the 19th. Yes, well, yes. So we'll date stamp this. Um, this date. And he's 28 in his pump. And the way he's thinking about it is, I'm not going to win anything at no. Fulham. I'm 28. I'm in my prime. Fine. Money. But I prefer to win stuff that people give as much credence to as winning nothing in the premiership I, I, I think and get 10 times the amount of money for I think it. it's more a case of if I'm going to win nothing I'd rather get paid a ton of money to win nothing yeah or win something that has about as much significance as, as nothing as nothing in the eyes of at least football fans over this side the Bundesliga in your opinion yes <laughs> <laughs> it's a useless league anyway yeah thanks, anyway, Scotland. anyway. Right. So that's the uh, political uh, addresses that are the way for this week. The um, party political broadcasters on behalf of Saudi yes, Arabia. Yes. Um, and we're getting we're going to get more into Saudi Arabia as we go through this because they're they're pretty heavily listed in this as well. So we're going to crack on. And we'll start off with Brent. <laughs> we're going to get through the, the, this stuff as quick as we can this week, so we can yeah. talk about some other stuff as well because there yeah. are things we want to talk about as well. Yeah. Um, and also just to remind people who we are. I'm Jerry Lynch, and this is Rowan Brennan. And that's we're co-hosts of this, and we'll be here every week going forward. So if you like the channel, if you like what we're doing or trying to do, give us a like and a subscribe, and you know that'll get us moving. That'll be least. great. Yeah. Um. Right. Let's crack on. We'll start off with Brentford, who um, good season last season. Great last year, just outside the European places. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but a very good uh finish for them. Two good seasons for Brentford. They've got a steady ship behind the scenes. And made some interesting signings. One that I think is very good. Other two that are one was on loan there last year and made permanent. Another one coming in from the same club as the other players. Which yeah. is, again, we'll get to that. So Nathan Collins has joined Brentford from Wolverhampton Wanderers for 25, 26 million euro. A bizarre I thought transfer. so as well, yeah. A great transfer for Brentford. I don't know why Wolves got rid of him. Um, as an Irish player, obviously mm-hmm. people um, in, in Ireland have known about Nathan Collins for quite a while. My uncle, he's a big, big Stoke supporter and has been, as they say, waxing lyrical about Nathan Collins for a long, long time. and. Um, when Wolves came, like, I thought bigger teams would come in for him. Mm. Um, he's still young. He's only 22, um, but he's got his move. He only spent a year at Wolves, and now he's getting his his move to what is a better side? Uh, well, yeah, on, on finishes last season, yeah. yeah. But Wolves would have been top half table on, until last season when yeah. it just didn't seem to click at all. Good no. manager now in Lopetegui as well, and Wolves yeah. 
he's going to put his own stamp on there, but we'll get to them. Yeah, it's a strange one for me. I, I was the same as you. When, when he went to Wolves last season, again, as a Leeds fan, I was thinking, that's exactly the kind of player Leeds should be going out to. A ball-playing centre-back who's yeah. good in the year as well, and is of a good age, has time ahead of him. Yeah. You know? Um, By the time he's 25, he'll be in a top four, top 16. I have no yeah. doubt. I just think it might just be a case of he doesn't sue what Lobotechi was trying to do, and therefore... New centre back space. He's a change. Cool, he's a good player. And listen, maybe they need the money. He he wants to invest somewhere else on the pitch. Um, Wolves do have some good defenders, so maybe they felt right. We can get a good chunk of change from him and invest mm. somewhere, and it's not going to have too much of a, a negative effect on the back line. Who knows? Yeah. But it's a nice chunk of change for Wolves. Hopefully, they use it wisely. Um, but it's a great signing for Brentford, and they're going to have to have a very tight back line next yeah. season, given who they're going to be missing. For but a Pont few months, Pontus Janssen's left the club, yeah, as well as that. Um, which is their captain for the last two seasons, yeah. three seasons, he's gone, bit injured last season, injury problems last yeah. couple of years, hasn't never been overly fit. And again, an ex Leeds player, so I know a little bit about him. Very good player, very good leader, very good, likes it to be about him. You were saying very yeah. much likes it to be about him when he left Leeds. It was a, a bargain for Brent for the five million quid they got him for because he uh, refused to come back pre season on time for the second year in a row. And Bielsa just said, Give it. Take the first offer you can get and sell him. And mm. um, has a habit of making it about himself. And then when he um, retired or left Brentford this year, he did a big speech about uh, when I was thrown out of my other club, this club made me a home. And I was like, Well, dude, you brought that on yourself. Mm -hmm. To be fair, you didn't come back on time. You're not his season. greatest fan, but he did do As well a player, at look, Brentford. Oh, and, and he did he, do well at Brentford. When he plays for your club, you love him because he is all about the badge. He is all about the fans. He's all about a up and get at him kind of job. And he gets you going. Like you make a tackle on it. But the mask on the end slips line. a little bit. Every now and then, you realize. He's kind of doing this so he's seen. He wasn't seen as to much. To be the Stuart Pierce, blood and thunder. Look at me. Shaking the fist, which English fans love. We do love that. Yeah. They, 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 do a, they do love a bit of that. So do the Irish. I'm it's saying the, English fans. It's Br the, British and Irish people, we love a, a fist shake. We talked about Jose last week. It's the Jose Mourinho, the Sam Allardyce, the Neil Warnock, the you know El Hadji youths of his time where you're like, ooh, cannot, ooh, ooh, ooh. cannot stand you. Yeah. And then they come and join your club, and you're like, "Yeah, let's get, get let's get out of." Everyone you know? likes their own. Thank you, kinda, they, yeah, yeah, they like their own troublemaker. But I won't say, but it doesn't take away from the fact that Pontus Janssen is a bloody good defender, yeah, and a, and a good leader, and does does get people to to fall in behind and go after a common goal. So he is a big loss. He's gone back to Man and free. Yeah. The other uh, ends, uh, Kevin. Uh, Shade. Shade. I don't know whether it's Skade or Shade. I'm pretty sure it's Shade. Um. So yeah, 21 years of age. He was on loan. With them last, last year, year. Yeah. Uh, 18 games, zero goals, 25 million quid, 25 million euro. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of money for no goals, but there's obviously again, there's they see potential there as well, and what you could bring next season. Yeah, um, but again, they, they, they tend to make smart moves. Brantford, they don't think they bring in players that they haven't researched, they don't tend to gamble on you know broken projects that they can rebuild or someone that hasn't fulfilled their potential but could still could do it. it just you know, you have these players or even certain managers who are like. I can I can make him the player we all think he's gonna be, mm. and then he goes to another club and that manager like I can make him the player we think and it just doesn't happen. Yeah, so like Balotelli, every manager is like, no, uh, I'll I get can, him back to his best. I, I, I find a lot of these kind effort. of young, yeah, uh, it, it's like a lot of these young players coming from the from the overseas leagues is that um, they remind me of those you know those kind of twenty euro scratch cards. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If if you, you win, win something, but it's if you win, but it's gonna be a big one because it's a twenty euro scratch card. <laughs> but the likelihood is, is you've just blown twenty euro on a piece of paper and I feel like that's the, the case with a lot of these players coming in from overseas leagues but I have seen a man go through an entire reel <laughs> of scratch cards and win nothing more than tenors Graham Potter probably Graham Potter <laughs> yeah that poor man that poor man yeah. that still hasn't got a job yeah we're not talking about Chelsea. We no, are. no, we are. We will. We will. Later. We will. We will. We will. <laughs> uh, the other incoming uh, Mark Flecken from also from Freiburg. So uh, Shade and um, Fleck, Flecken. Flecken. Yeah, Flecken, you got oh, it. Flecken the Deutsch. Flecken, Flecken the Flecken. Deutsch. Uh, Flecken comes in for Freiburg, 13 million euro goalkeeper. Um, did they need him? Well, if Raya goes, they'll definitely need him. Do you and think I that say, says Raya's going? Yes. I think it pretty much says Raya's going to go. I think they want to get the keeper in before they lose the keeper so they don't have an extra five or 10 million stamped onto the replacement they need. Yeah. Um, so I think that's Raya gone. Where to? I don't know. I would imagine Chelsea um, with Mendy and Aritha Balaga. He's my overly affected Spanish pronunciation. Um, but I don't see either of those keepers staying, not for Pochettino. Mendy has not been, he's been off the boil for about 18 months now. And uh, Aritha Balaga got uh, another bite of the cherry, but I don't think 
he's going to stay. Mm. So I think Raya is going to leave and probably will go to Chelsea. So, so I think that's... Fleck like comes it. in as number one next season. That, that's that's it, what I think. It's yeah. a smart way of doing it. If you're, I mean, when you haven't got a goalkeeper and you're looking for a goalkeeper, it's kind of a captive audience. They can kind of demand whatever fee you want because they need the keeper. They that's haven't got it. one. Whereas in the situation, they've got the keeper already and then they can go and get Well, Happy United last year with Anthony, as soon as Greenwood has that problem on the right wing forward, it's like, oh, 40 million goes up to 100 million. And you're like, okay. Not but... the only problem Greenwood had last season? No. Um, on the outs, uh, Mads <laughs> and goes into Salzburg, 6 million euro. Mm -hmm. um, Hilal Diversoglu. Oh, the, the, the great. I think. Yeah, I've, I've definitely not. He's gone to Galatasaray for half a million, and Pontus Janssen's gone back to Malmo for free. So, mm -hmm. not bringing a huge amount of money, but again, probably just clearing the deck to bring in a couple of players, free up space. Good center players. half, good keeper. Um, and Waymo's going to have a lot like to him. do. Good player. Like um, without Ivan Tony being able to play until at least January, um, I think and Waymo's going to have a lot to do, and I think Shade is going to have to really, you know, get his act together early to try and contribute with some goals. But with a new keeper and a new center half. I think they're probably going to just try and keep it nice and tight until Tony comes back and then hope those goals start to flow. The problem with Tony is it's a ban from all football related. So he can't even train with the club. No, he can't do anything. So he's only just doing his can't own even play to beauty. Up. So <laughs> can't, he can't. He can't. He can't. And that's it. He's done. Poor man. Oh, well. He loves to do it, Mm. Play it on a daily. <laughs> Nobody does anymore because we've got FIFA. Exactly. And grown ups. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who we got next? Yeah, Fulham. Thanks for that. Yeah, Fulham. Um, no, in, no incomings. Uh, nobody just yet. And you were saying there's a Marco Silva. Because Silva is unhappy with the lack of transfer activity from the club and that funds that he thought were going to be made available are not. So he's not the happiest. The Al Hilal or one of these places in Saudi have made an offer for him to come and manage. Stephen Gerrard's having a great time over there. Did you see the video of him trying to get his points across of just come and volley the ball? And yeah. Just like, if you want it, just tell me you want it. Well, tell me you want it. Get it. I mean, we could get we Listen, we might oh, be able to get a gig yeah. over there. Hendo's yeah. Hendo's uh, gone there as well. So Hendo's yes. gone, but I mean, I think I think they might be waiting for West Ham to put in a bid for Paulinha um to replace Rice. So I think maybe Fulham might try and cash in on that um and get maybe 60 70 million quid and then they're probably going to try and get Fred from United for anywhere between 20 and 25, which I think is criminally low for a guy who's barely 30, who's you know a starting midfielder yeah. for Brazil and an experienced elite Premier League player, regardless of your opinions. Um, is he worth more than 25 million? I think so. I think he's but good. um but anyway. isn't, isn't 25 million the new 2.5 million? Yes. That's, that's the <laughs> yes. modern version. Like They've just moved. Lower mid-table size sign 25 million pound players. You go, 10, 10, 50 years ago, that, that's breaking records. Yeah. In the clubs. Now it's like, no, it's just an it's average. It's just an together. average 25 million. So um, it's crazy where the numbers have gone. But uh, listen, Willian's renewed. Big one for them. They might get Fred in. Announced that as a signing, which is also slightly concerning. The thing about Fulham is, for me, they're not poor. They're owned by the Cans. Tony Khan, who owns AEW, owns Jacksonville Jaguars. Shadid mm. Khan, his father, who was just yeah. minted. Mm -hmm. They own Fulham. When they came up the last time and went straight back down, Tony Khan was very open about mistakes they made. He's pretty active on Twitter. And he, he said, we, we we know we didn't fix the defensive issues that we needed to get during the transfer windows. We have identified the issue that we have. They went off and fixed it and they just romped the championship mm. and had a cracking season last year. And you're yeah. going, they know what they're doing now. They, they've got American owners who've now relaxed and found their rhythm here. Mm -hmm. They'll be fine. Unless they start making late moves, unless it's a case of we just need to get some bodies off the books, books for financial fair play reasons maybe, and then we can start bringing in a few as well. And it could be a late winner for them. But I'd be absolutely shocked if Fulham don't learn from the mistakes that they made the last time they got relegated and don't strengthen the side. And Leeds did the exact same thing after a good finish. When Leeds finished ninth in the champ in the Premier League, their owners decided we're fine. Mm. This squad can hang on for a year. We mm. won't spend any money. This won't spend any money. We'll be fine. Then ultimately Leeds got relegated. Just sorry, just avoided relegation and sacked the else as a result of it. But again, it's the same thing. It's you cannot afford to not invest every season in the Premier League because everybody else will and everybody else moves up you and can. you drop down. You can, but I mean, you have to basically look at what Fulham overachieved last season. Are they going to break? Yeah, yeah. Are they going to beat ninth? I don't think so. Um, it's not attainable with again, though. If they, if they get to ninth again, it's attainable. Again, if they if they are smart in the market and they bring the right players in to, to bring them on, that's losing step. Mitrovic and all his goals huge. is going to be huge to replace. But they have to look at it one way. Are we better than the bottom five teams? Yeah. Should be. Maybe we just need to take 
it easy with what we spend. We've seen a lot of clubs go, listen, we're just going to go absolutely gangbusters, spend all this money. First. It doesn't work. They nearly get relegated or get relegated. And then they're so they're so much in trouble because of that, that they don't even come back up the next year. And then they're looking at a two, three, four year pro project to try and get back up. When the likes of Leeds and the likes of these other teams, they do get relegated, they just bounce straight back up the next year because they're in reasonable shape. And I think that is the key to long-term success. Um, so I don't think chasing the short term is wise, but mm. they definitely do need to bring someone in, especially with Mitrovic gone. If Mitrovic does go. Yes. I if, I, if, I think the only way to stop that from happening is you just got to throw a huge contract at them. They've, they've got to... Potentially. Keep, just... just because he, he proved something last season that he had been unable to prove. Up until no one thought he could do can those numbers. Can you do it in the Premier League? Yeah. We know he no, the championship. No one thought he could. And there he goes and goes and does it. Again, good supply into him. They built the team around. Pretty much the supply chain to the mm. front line was built around getting him goals, getting those those kind of opportunities. Yeah. Goals. Bloody great striker. Yeah. You know, done international level. You lose him. There are not, we said this last week, trying to find a 20 goal a season striker when everybody else is trying to find a 20 goal a season striker. There aren't that it's many. It's impossible. Amount. There's about 10 in the world. For the Premiership, and you're going to let one go, yeah, and then go, oh, and you're bringing in a player. But now we're looking, well, whatever money we get in from Al Halal, mm. that's our spending money to go and get a yeah. striker. But you're, again, you're probably going to buy a lesser striker. Or United goal can't find a twenty goal striker. Chelsea can't find one. Arsenal can't find one. Kane have one, or sorry, Spurs have one in Kane, but they can't hang on to him. They're struggling to hang on to him. Well, they've done very well to hang on to him so, so far. far, but we'll see. Yeah. Right next, so we say so. No one comes in full, but they've gone a Gazinga, a Gazinga sorry, he's gone out and gone out on a free transfer to Girona. Joe Bryan's gone to Millwall on a free. That's a good signing for Millwall, by the way. Joe Bryan's a decent fullback. I really mm -hmm. liked him in the championship. Shane Duffy has left and gone to Norwich, and um, wasn't that full very long. And Stephen Sessignon has been released on a free transfer as well. No club just yet, but he goes out. Um, nothing spectacular there. All gone Shane down. Duffy All back gone to the down. championship, a good Premier League Probably servant. Be a very, very good championship. You defender. will be missed, but I think he'll do very well. He'll do very well in the championship. Yeah. He's a good championship defender, um, and might give Norwich something who again are struggling financially. But we're not talking about a championship. Um, Palace, very quiet window also for Palace very, so far. Very quiet, and then and not a magic sign. And Jefferson Lermer's coming from Bournemouth on a free transfer. A yeah. decent midfielder in the Premier League. Yeah, but decent is probably the level. Um. Potentially he relegated Leeds last year, but we'll talk about that. Um, still too soon. But uh, yeah, decent. A lot of outgoings and some big outgoings to Palace over the last couple of years. Jack Butland goes to Rangers on free. Now he was out last year on loan at Manchester United anyway, yeah. so not the end yeah. of the world. Good keeper. Uh, Wilfred Zaha, huge loss. Free transfer, currently unattached. Maybe they can get him and get him another contract to bring him back in. I think that could put that with William. Saudi waves, hello. Saudi does look I like it's waving. Think, Adam. Yes, and another marquee signing and a good age as well. Not too old, not an old. Twenty nine now. Peak. Thirty. He's in his peak. Yeah, his peak. Still yeah, in his peak. Um, look, uh, uh, Milivojevic goes out. Had been captain for a while. Penalty taker, good midfielder. Yeah. So I has had injury problems as well, but he's gone again. Free transfer. No one's picked him up just yet. And James McArthur has had a very long time. I didn't remember him going in there with James McCarthy but at the same time, both as young potential midfielders. Yeah. Uh, McCarthy's been there for a very long time. Good servant to Crystal Palace. He leaves on a free transfer. Again, no one's picked him it's up. a lot of yet. big names from Palace leaving on a free. And they've brought in Lerma, good defensive midfielder. Um, but they're going to miss the goals and busyness and speed of Zaha. I think this is going to be the season that Eberechi Etsy kind of, becomes Michael Olise as well as a player Olise I, did I really, really well I really like Michael I, I think he's one of the underrated players I think he's a smashing pass for yeah. I really like Michael Olise I think he's massively underrated yes but I agree see him and Eze step up this year Eze did step up towards the end of last year once Vieira was got was Vieira just him. binned him and just put him on the bench for reasons I can't understand and um old Roy comes in and says go and play son and he who brought him in the first place who absolutely he played so well towards the end. He was a massive part of what it should be said. They achieved. I said this on my channel last year when we were talking about Leeds relegation because after Christmas the transfer, I thought mm. we'll be okay. Yeah, because I was watching Palace and nobody else was watching Palace. I just kept saying, on Twitter, <laughs> "Keep yeah. an eye on Palace. They're dropping like a rock. Like a yeah, like and, a stone. And, they're, and they're dropping way too early." My early. faith in Vieira. I thought they were, I thought he was a smart kind they, of guy. There was like four or five Big games, like no shots on target at all in the game. Yeah. no wins in his last ten matches there. And that's relegation form, and they just did not look like they were gonna no score. And to to have no goals coming in and have someone like Etsy on your bench, I found 
perplexing. Had to be personal. But Hodgson came in and gave him his chance, and I thought he was transformative for them. I think he's going to be the new Zaha. He's going to be the kind of the lead guy yeah. for their attacks, depending on who they can bring in as a as a kind of a, a striker or, or, or a kind of a wing forward. Mm. I don't know. Um, but they've had a lot of losses. They're definitely going to have to bring someone in quite quickly in the in the forward lines. I think they'd be a bit. If they want to make sure the last year doesn't happen again, you know, they, they had the loans the previous season, the year's first year in charge when they had uh, Conor Gallagher was there. Was I was about to say, standing for them. I think they should go back in for him because he isn't staying at Chelsea. He's definitely available. Yeah. And there's talk of Everton being in for him, talk of West Ham Everton being in for him. him. I think Palace should absolutely go back to Conor Gallagher. Yeah. I think he'd be welcome he with open arms. Everton, are Everton are after Willie Nanto at Leeds and they're struggling with upfront payments. Yeah. And they've got a huge financial fair play thing lingering over them. They've got their judgment on their financial fair play breach in yeah. October this year, which okay. could lead to points deduction if they're found guilty. Mm. And they have to make sure they stay within financial fair play for this current cycle as well. Okay. Or else they'll have a second one, potentially. There's, there's eyeballs on them now. All right. And um, they reckon they're in. They're within the because of COVID. They're within the the, the financial the boundaries. Of boundaries. The track, yeah, it says you can lose 103 million in a year. They lost 320. It's treble. So there's arguments. Then they're trying to say, well, some of that was uh, youth investment. You're allowed to sign off in the stadium plans. Mm-hmm. To sign off. And then other, there's other parts saying that they're not related to that. So if you're an Everton fan watching this, I'm not saying that you are guilty of financial fair play. Just saying that there is a that you as individuals, just you, <laughs> yeah, just you. you, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, <laughs> it's um, it's just uh it's hanging over them like a shadow right now. Yeah. And they have to be kind of mindful. I think they should well. go for Conor Gallagher. I really do. I think he'd be, a, I think yeah, he, uh, yet another kind of young player. It's a top Sorry. six midfielder for me. It could be. He's, he's definitely top half midfielder. of the table. He did, he did wonderful things with, uh, with, with Palace when he was there. And I, like, given where Chelsea are at the moment, and we're going to move on to them, I think next. Finally. Finally. Um, I, I don't see how he might not be able to, Get a game and elbow his way in there, but I think if he wants regular first team ball, he probably should go to Palace. Well, you were asking about Chelsea's midfield, and we'll get to that now. So yes. now, finally, after two weeks, we're going to finally talk about Chelsea properly. The circus is, is in is town. Du, 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 du. This <laughs> is uh, the fire sale to beat all fire sales. Um, the outgoings are far more interesting than the incomings. All right, go, Harvey, go. We'll start off with the incomings. We'll get them out of the way. Christopher and Cuckoo comes in from RB Leipzig. Now, I will say this again that I said last week, the Leeds brought players in from Leipzig and they struggled. The, the gap is huge yep. between the, the, the lower half or mid. Outside the top three or two even in, Ger- in Germany, the gap is massive. Yeah. So there's going to be... Um, just don't give them the number nine shirt. Because that's in done at Chelsea if he gets the number nine. Every number nine that they've cursed, had. That cursed number nine. That shirt. cursed shirt. 60 million quid. So modern terms, reasonable fee, I suppose. Still a lot of money. Hacker. 60 million quid. Um, 119 goals, 47 games. He's got roughly just slightly better than one in every three. Um, it's a decent conversion rate. Um, he comes in with you know a decent reputation from the German league. Let's how he, let's see how he does. Uh, at Chelsea, it's Chelsea. Despite all their recent success, have really, really struggled um, in the forward line um, with regards to their main striker. Felix last year, even just Felix, he's not really a striker. He's kind of he doesn't know what he is. He's just a kind of a floaty kind of like Havertz, kind of a floaty player. Exactly. Um, uh, uh, like ever since Drogba, they haven't. I mean, Diego Costa came in, did a good job for about two years. Then he did what Costa always does and just throws the head and ends up getting booted out of whatever yep. club he's in. Yeah. Um, so he was a success in fairness. But since Drogba and Costa, I can't really think of a striker that's come in and you've been like, and yes. neither of them were the number nine. Hey, Drogba that were 11. That's true. That's true, actually. Correct. But, I mean, they've had... Can you imagine three years ago telling Chelsea fans, yeah, you'll have Lukaku and Aubameyang up front? <laughs> like, oh my God. And now both of them... Couldn't hit a barn door. They couldn't hit a barn door that, for whatever reason. And no club wants them. And uh, hasn't has an Aubameyang moved somewhere? Got to Marseille today. Today? Confirmed, done. So in Marseille, just shame. I think he still could have done it in the top divisions somewhere. Something's up with that guy. I, I don't know. What, there's a, and it can be pretty mean. We saw the Deli Ali stuff last week which we should talk about at the end of this for the end i would love to actually, just a yeah. huge amount of you talk about sports psychologists at clubs and the need for them and, and the amount of access that fans now have to players on a 24-hour basis with social media you I mean you can bombard a player mm. on lots of platforms continuously where 20 years ago it's unless you bump into them on the street or say something in the stadium chances are they're not going to hear what you think yeah so you see the damage is done to delhi you look at people like obama and you go well, why is this guy stopped where, where is his form gone 
you wonder is there something else going because he is a good striker. He did score a lot of goals in lots of different leagues. Like he's but in the last he couple of years, was in the top five strikers anyway. in the world, yeah. including Messi and Ronaldo. He was doing Dortmund things before Haaland was doing Dortmund things. That was it. But I mean, when he was at Arsenal, him himself and Kane were yeah. golden boot kind of. 20, 25 goals a season. Yeah. Now he was kind of he kind of suffered from Arsenal's lack of success. So I don't think he really got his due. He did from Arsenal. He got three hundred and fifty grand a week out of them uh, for quite a long time. But I just don't think he has even close the silverware that he deserves. But I think he got a La Liga. I think, I think he, he got a La Liga medal for having been at, Ar at Barcelona last year and playing enough games. I actually do think he has a La Liga medal. So. Yeah. He's got that to his name. He should have more shiny pots to his name than his talent deserves. Um, but a lot of Arsenal players over the last 10 years could say the exact Sanchez same Sanchez and stuff like that. But anyway, listen, he's off to France and best of luck to him. Uh, other exits from Chelsea. Uh, Nicholas Jackson, sorry, and coming in for yeah. Chelsea, not yeah. exits, yeah. And uh, Nicholas Jackson comes in, 22-year-old forward from Villarreal, comes in, yeah. 37 million looks like he's probably a secondary option or i don't know i mean it's 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 nearly 40 million quid it's um he scored what is it 26 goals or sorry 26 games 12 goals roughly one and two that's, that's good pretty good conversion yeah, rate um good. especially in spain it's a very good league like the top six seven teams are quite strong um i mean i i see him coming in and and, and giving some guys some trouble and hopefully getting into that forward line. Um it's young players coming. They've brought a lot of young players in Chelsea. They've, they've got they're a definitely lot changing of the there. age. They're changing the age demographic clearly there. Sterling's getting a little bit older. Mudrick is young. It's young, but he might beefy now. Do you see the oh picture of him now? God. Boy's been in the gym. Mudrick has gone pure hole. He's gone Mexican slow, supplements. Like, yeah. He's got Mexican complete supplements. Mexican supplement Mudrick. And uh he looks big, he looks jacked. Um Maybe it'll work for him. Who knows? Um, hopefully it doesn't affect his speed. Maybe he's got speed to spare and he just yes. needs to toughen up. Um, he could use the out of pace and still be yeah, very fast. But they've got rid of Ziyech. They've got rid of uh, like Kovacic. They've got rid of Kante. They've got rid of Mount. Um, there's room for this Nicholas Jackson to come in and mm. force his way in. And for 37 million, is it automatic starter money? No. Not but is it coming in just to make up the numbers? Certainly not. Any other club outside the top five, that's starter money. In exactly. Top five, it's, exactly. It's, and he's got one and two coming in from La Liga in a Villarreal team that is good, but it's not known for its attacking prowess. They've always been quite a decently defensive, organized team. Um, so to get one and two in the Spanish league at... Fans of the Sevilla Cup as well, they are Villarreal. They like the they they, like the Seville Cup. They, they like that cup as well. So I think he's I think he could do potentially well. The numbers are mm. looking good for him. So another, another young player has come in as well. Uh, Angelo or Angelo, whatever you want to pronounce it. Yeah. 18 year old winger comes in from Santos in Brazil for 15 million. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably an under 21 signing. Down yeah, the road. He, he could go, go out alone. alone next season. You never know, yeah. but seems to be a decent player coming in from Brazil. Not a young player. Don't know anything about him, so I'm sure yeah. we'll learn more about him over the next year or two. Yeah, yeah. Another guy comes in Portugal. That Diego Moreira comes in free transfer from Benfica B, not A. Okay, B, okay. Saying. So again, that's an 18 year old. Benfica. Okay. <laughs> Benfica. He goes into the uh, under 21 side, presumably. So yeah. Um, we we'll move on from the incomings because the outcomes. Everything must of, go. I ran out of paper. <laughs> I ran out of paper. <laughs> it's uh, it's an interesting read, isn't it? We've talked about some of these. We can we can last year. It's pretty, like a pretty, Premiership pretty. Eleven. It's a very good Premiership <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> Just this everything could, must go on on paper. This could challenge like it's, yeah. Kai Havertz, Arsenal, seventy five million euro. Mason Mount, Manchester United, sixty four million euro. And we dealt with these last. These are week. euros before anyone starts getting funny about I'm the working, numbers, not pounds. I'm working off trans. This is not because we're in Ireland. I'm working off transfer market because. I don't even believe euros are real currency. So, like, you know, <laughs> okay. it still looks like plastic money to me, monopoly. Yeah. So, we'll ignore the, 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 you do you the know, conversion. Do the conversions you know. yourself, you know. But anyway, go on. We're working off transfermarket.com and they're the ones that are telling us it's euro. So, mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done Havertz to Arsenal. We talked about that last week. If you want to check that out, it's in the first episode. You can go check that out. We should link it up here somewhere if you want to check that out. Yeah. Uh, Mason Mount, Manchester United, also spoken about on that episode. Good signing. And Mateo Kovacic to Manchester City, 29 million euro. Again, covered that last week. Uh, Kaladu Kulabali goes to Newcastle United B what team. What a disaster that guy was. Off to Newcastle B in Saudi Arabia. Al Halal. <laughs> Newcastle for, B. <laughs> for 18.5 million euro. Brilliant. Nice. 
Yeah. Did that Benfica B kind of kind of set that up? Are, uh, I like that. I like that. I just want to see how many of these lads Newcastle end up. Newcastle B. I am dying to see how many of these players end up back in Newcastle on loan next yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, It's gonna be it's gonna be curious. There was rumors that Neves from Wolves was being loaned immediately to Newcastle, yeah. which would have I suppose the Wolves fan would have lost that. I mean, mind. UEFA would have to absolutely lose it if that happened. I think they flew the kite. And you know Saudi owned the top four teams. They do, yeah. Well, they own all four. Yeah, invested heavily in all of them and the. Crown Prince has final say on anything to do with those. Imagine clubs. the British government owning City, United, Chelsea, and this is the thing. I Liverpool thought, or Arsenal. Or... I thought under FIFA rules you weren't allowed to do this, but clearly there's re- ways around it. I think if they, once you can prove that it's being ran, Saudis can do what they like with their own league. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can. Who's going to stop them? You don't Who's like, come in? You don't like this FIFA? Yeah. How about we invest in your next World Cup? Yeah, send you, some delegates over go. to us that might not come home. It's a very large um, money, so but... yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so who, who who's the last one we said there? Kovacic? Kulabali. And allowed 18 million. So that's Newcastle's transfer budget. Yeah, that 100 stuff. million for him four years ago. I know, right? And yeah. he was, I remember seeing him against Leeds in one of the first games when Leeds beat Chelsea last year. He had an absolute shocker. Chelsea fans were so excited. Kulabali, Lukaku. They the just thing. thought, we're, we're going to win. We're going to win everything. Premier League and the top six is a different beast to everywhere else. Yes. And, and players don't automatically come in from even top European sides or top Italian or German yeah. sides and uh, that we've talked about that. Yeah. Christian Pulisic, which I think is just the biggest crying shame of all. So players. do I agree. Thought he was a great player. Bag of talent. Still do. Still thinks he's a great player. Yeah. Had, didn't get a run. Leeds were linked heavily with him last year a couple of times for huge money they were looking at for him. Gone to AC Milan for 20 million euros. That's, that's about 18.2 million pounds. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great uh, bit of business for AC, I yeah. think. Um, comes in to replace Tonali, I imagine. I would assume so. Right? Um, and Kessie might even go back to AC from Barcelona as well. But anyway, we're not going to start talking about Syria. Mm. Pulisic, great player. He seemed to be kind of like the Mason Mount of Chelsea. Came in from Dortmund, big money again. Yet another example of an import from the Bundesliga, particularly Dortmund, that just doesn't seem to yeah. work out. Now he did get an injury towards the Last end of his year, time he struggled a bit as well and it just did seem to affect his output lightning quick technically very good, good he's finisher. an absolute he's a good finisher i think he's a great player i'm sorry to see him leave the premiership yeah. to be honest i thought he could have done some some really good stuff but i think he wants to play at the top end of a division he instead is of the poster mid tabling it for the usmnt he is the poster he is American the guy soccer. For, for American soccer. Yeah. He is the guy. So I wish him all the luck in the yeah. world. I hope it goes really well with him uh, at AC and we'll see him at the later stages of the Champions League. I think league. he comes back in a year or two. I hope so. I think he sorts himself so. up, met Milan and ends up back in the Premier League. The pace, I think he's going to tear that place up. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he's going to tear it up. So best of luck to him. Slow enough league. It's it's not a fast, pacey league. So I think he steps in there and his I, pace will... I think definitely. he'll light it up. I really do. So. Milan do this, don't they? Milan, can, they just pick off players from other clubs for lesser than they should go for and manage to put Reason they, they did excellently last year, yeah. They, part, Giroud front of him banging in goals. Giroud, like, what a man! I'd love him. What a man! I'd love him for a year. Too. Just, <laughs> I bet you would. He just amazing. scores goals, and everyone has a problem with him at every club. Like, but the guy scores. I remember goals. at Arsenal when he was first there, I was like, he's not. He's not an elite level striker. And it's like double okay, figures every season. Double, double figures, figures, double and figures, and it's a Europa League, figures. Champions League, World Cup, top score for France. You're like, all oh, right. Arsenal bin them off to Chelsea, wins the Champions there League, might... scores in the final for, for Chelsea. It's like when Juve, was it Juve binned off Perlo to AC or the opposite way around? Yeah. It was the opposite way around. And it was like, yeah, nah, nah, you can have him. And then it <laughs> wins all the shiny the greatest of all time as well. Oh, then. brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so who we got next? Uh, Edward Mendy heads off also to Newcastle B to Al-Halal for 18 and a half million euros. So okay. He's out the door. Okay. Ruben Loftus cheek heads to Milan as well. He's gone to Milan for, for 16 million euros, which is, again, is a good move. I like Loftus cheek Good player. Again, didn't get a huge amount of time in the first team at Chelsea. Did under Lampard. Looked good. The first Lampard's first stint, not his return. Um, and looked really good and, and fell out of favour a bit. Went in yeah. the second order. Again, could be injuries there as well. 16 million quid by AC Milan's is, is a shrewd sign and he's a good player as well. And mm-hmm. um, Ethan Ampadu joins Leeds mm-hmm. yesterday. For How do you eight. feel about that? I'm delighted. Yeah. Yeah, cracking signing. It's the first time Leeds have flexed their most since the takeover has gone through. Great. Takeover went through on Monday. Tuesday, that deal was done. You got to get a bit of cash to spend now. You don't yeah. think it's going to be long till we see them back? Nothing leads going to go heavy this year. Look, but looks things just serious money going in. So, um, 49ers Enterprises have big money, but we're not talking about leads. But yeah, Ampatu is a really solid signing. Ball playing centre back. Pochettino apparently wanted him in his training camp this year. Okay. Um, Ampatu wasn't guaranteed game time. Didn't want to go out on loan again. He's only mm. 22, 50 caps for Wales. Good player. Um, can play centre back or CDM okay. as well. Can go with the ball at his feet. 
8 million, which will rise to 10, depending on um, add-ons okay. and appearances, but it's a good move. Um, and N'Golo Kante goes to um, um, if he had on a free transfer. Sad to see him go. It's the right move. Free transfer. What a player. His knees are made of biscuits now, it seems, but... What a player. And Golo Kante, he's going to be missed. What a player. He kind of almost redefined a position that was redefined with, by Makaleli and, and, and SEN and these kind of guys that have that that, that came in. But Made the central defensive midfield position sexy. I could not have said it better. Nobody wanted to be a CD. If you're did. a kid growing up, we're going to play, I want to be a central defensive midfielder. Yeah. I want to never score goals. Exactly. Yeah, okay, you don't want and, to he, uh, and all the stories you hear about him, like the way he was at birthdays and like players within Chelsea. He bought a club. Huh? He's bought a club. Where? I have to look it up, but he's bought a club. Talk amongst in yourselves. In France? He's bought a club. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. He's take got, out some ha, I have to check this out. We're gonna I know we're live in this, but like I'm not live, but I'm gonna just check it out because he did buy a club and I'm dying to know who it was. Really? It's not a small club. Um, what? yeah. Can't the guy didn't even buy a flash car when he was at Chelsea. They used to make fun of him for having a mini. Like he just didn't invest in yeah, yeah, yeah. In, 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 I heard all these brilliant stories about Kante, just the humility. Yeah. Uh, but bordering on naivety. He's uh, bought Royal Excelsior Virton third division team in Belgium. Good for him. Owns them. Go on, Kante. Let's right. see what happens. Always He'll be across. missed, but what a player. Absolute problem. What a player. Beautiful footballer. Enjoyed watching him yeah. at Leicester. Enjoyed watching him at Chelsea. Not a big Chelsea fan, but this is an objective podcast. I liked him as a player. Great like, player. Always liked him. Great He's a player. good guy, real pro, and just bloody good at what he did. Got on with his job. No frills, no bullshit. Mm. Just got on with it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, are they all the outs done? They're all the I outs think... done. That's a lot. There's, what, There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gone so far well, and more to look go. Look at what they have in defence, though, right? You think that's all they've got gone? They've got Cucurella, Fofana, Chilwell, Silva, but he Fofana's actually... out injured now as well. Fofana Long-term. out injured. Long-term. Uh, Colwell, Reese James, and Chalaba. They've got eight, eight, and all of them at one stage or another would have been considered a starting defender. Maybe not Colwell, but mm. Cucurella, okay, he struggled, but they, but they, they have want, to be getting rid of one or two of them. They have to. They want big money for Colwell. There are teams in the lower half of the Premier yeah. League who are after Colwell. They're looking for big money. Yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard that. I don't think anyone's going to pay big money. Yeah, but they've got seven or eight. Chalabel, I, I take off your hands in the, in the morning. He did very well. He was a great fantasy football purchase. He was uh, 3.2 million or something, came in for right back. And uh, Chalaba came in and he was uh, a mainstay. But like listen, they've got great value there. James they've got a lot of cover and they're like going to have to get rid of at least two or three of them. Reese James isn't going to go anywhere. He's a smashing fullback. Again, made of biscuits though. I yeah. think uh, he's going to be one of these kind of Ledley King type characters. Hope I hope not. not. Yeah, you hope I really do because he's young, but he's... And he's also great for fantasy league as well. He's their point scare when he's yeah, playing. Chill out the same. Exactly. Both chances um, for the may as well so be out there wingers. I think as well. you're going to see some departures from the back line um, quite soon. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Chilwell go and Cucurella take the position on his own. Chilwell go back out. You think you'd keep Cucurella over Chilwell? Chilwell had well, injuries again. Chilwell yeah, been fit all yeah, season. Yeah. Cucurella seems to be fit more. Like, it, it depends on what they want to do. It depends exactly. on how Pochettino wants to play. And you won't know that until the, until the preseason game mm. when you get into the, the more serious end yeah. of the tour start. Yeah. And uh, moving on, uh, last club to talk about in this part, and um, we're actually near time as well. We'll talk about Wolverhampton. <laughs> Oh, nothing major. They've made the transfer of um, Matias Cunha permanent from Atletico Madrid for 50 million euro. And um, did okay when he came in, struggled, score goals at the start, but got a couple towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Bubakar Traore from Mets, 11 million euro, and Tom King from Northampton on a free transfer as well. Bill Goins, this is where it gets interesting. Ruben Neves has also gone to Al Hilal, 55 million euro. Nathan Collins has gone to Brent. We've already talked about it. Big million. players. Connor Cody's left, gone to gone to Leicester for eight million quid, and has been injured in a preseason friendly today. You now he limped off and was seen limping into a, into the changing rooms. Mm-hmm. Interesting to see he was early in the game, so could be an injury that might start slow his season down. Uh, Heyu Kawabe has gone to Sport Liège for one point five million. So he's just clearing off fringe players here now. The interesting ones for me: Adama Traore, old greasy arms himself. And this is what I, I Wolves insisted on getting fifty million for him. Nearly every season, Spurs would sniff around them or Leeds would be linked with them. Some, Barcelona. Always, by the Barcelona. And then Bar- Barcelona. Had when the, they were in that um, loan year where they had Depay and Traore. And Barcelona all these, don't have a bean. They owe everyone money. Yeah, they they still owe Liverpool money for players for, for Coutinho, apparently. He was, They're going to be paying that off. For they their, owe, every year, Barcelona have to get rid of players and restructure in order to be able to register new players yeah. every single year. So mm. like when Leeds sold Rafinha to them last year, the deal was Leeds were like you can have them for 45 million, which is less than Chelsea are offering, but we want all of it mm. up front mm. now. Yeah, it was 65 in the end, wasn't it? 45. I thought it was 65. No. Chelsea offered 65 pounds or euro pounds. Um, 
Chelsea, off, Chelsea offered 65. For. Leeds wanted to accept it, and Rafinha said, "I'm only leaving from going to Barcelona." That was it. And, and ironically, his agent was Makes Deco, sense. who is now the sporting director of Barcelona. So, talking about conflict of interest. Wow. Way too involved in the club he was. Mm. Um, but anyway, they've had to, they had to restructure loads of stuff. But Leeds were like, "You're not getting him to pay us up front because we, we don't believe he'll have the money next year to pay us." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there's other clubs in a similar situation. Milan, when they were selling Kessie to him, were the same. They're like, "Give us the money up front. You're not getting him because we don't believe you're going to have the cash next year." And one of the AC Milan, no, it wasn't AC Milan, was it? It was Bayern Munich. It was chairman, Bayern Munich. Chairman. Um, there was Bayern Munich. Rumenegger. Rumenegger. Rumenegger said they'll be gone in five years. Yeah. No, they wouldn't to... sell a they're player to you... Barcelona because... Who was it? There was something last year. He there was... said, I don't believe that club will exist in its current entity in five years. They were like, we're not going to give you... So There was someone they wanted and they were like, we don't think you'll be able to pay either. Yeah. And they said that club was going to be gone, gone in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And they sold the name and rights to the stadium. And they've knocked down the half. Levers, that's what half. it was called. They've uh, pulling, pull, levers. pulling levers. Spotify sponsorship came Spotify in. Spotify sponsorship, money. yeah. The Spotify dome. Or they looked for their. Calling. They looked for their um, Champions League money last year off FIFA up front for the next four years, and FIFA were like, "I oh, sorry, UEFA were like, there's no guarantee you're going to qualify for for the next five years. Why would we give you the money? Yeah. But they're front loading all of these sponsorship deals. Yeah. For now. You know, but only mean, getting about 20% what they could have gotten over the lifetime because they're so desperate. But also, what are you going to do in two years' time when you have to restructure and you have no more sponsorship? Yeah. Sell? They're doing weddings on the pitch now. They've, they, they've sold their soul. Barcelona were a club that would never have a sponsor on their shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. They Before, before then they had UNICEF. And, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's well, an interesting... I like to see it, to be honest, because um, they acted improperly for a very long time very and their their hubris has finally caught up with them and yep. I, as an institution you don't want to see anything happen but anyway back to premiership stuff yeah that was Rory they insisted on 50 million for him for years they could have sold him at, yeah they could have sold him at any transfer window in the last six mm. for decent money they decided to hold out for big money didn't get it mm. And there was a free transfer and unattached. And I think he'll struggle to get a club in the Premier League at top level. I think he left France. Adama Troy. Yeah, he, yeah, he kind of, he had a bit of a kind of a two-year spell of, look at him, he's big, greasy I'm arms fast. and he's so strong. And then it was like, oh yeah, but he's average at football. So Couldn't swing a stick of a cross. He just cannot no, cross the ball. No. And you could see it last year when he did play him off the bench. There's always that moment the commentator will always say, oh, Troy's on now, he's going to cause him problems. Mm. You could see the frustration in the Wolves players when he crossed the ball. Mm. Every now and then, you know, but he, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. Like That's it. eventually you put enough cross in the box, mm. someone's gonna get on the end of one of them. Yeah. But very little end product for the man of his size. Diego Costa, you talked about it, he had more cards than he had goals there, and he had the yeah. when he came in. He's gone back out. And the interesting one for me is Joe Matinho has gone out on a free transfer and is currently still unattached. Mm. Which is he's old now though, isn't he? He's 35. Is that 34? old Is that old? 35? Anymore? Not if you take care of yourself, but at the Premiership, if you're in the midfield, 35, there's a lot of running to be doing yeah. third, as, as a 35-year-old at that age. Um, strikers, you can get away with it. Center halves, but fullbacks, midfielders, and anyone relying on, on on a lot of... kind of You saw even with Ericsson now, obviously he's got a, a ticker, but uh, even at the age of 30 and, you know, that kind of going on, it's, it, it's a tough it's a tough position to be playing at 35 yeah. in the Premiership week in, week out. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's it for those transfers for this yeah. week. So it's we're getting through them, tipping away. We'll get onto more normal stuff once the season starts. Yeah, sure. To get everyone to speed and then we'll crack in. Exactly, with the, with the exactly. Well, um, how do you think Pochettino's going to do with that team? I think he'll do okay. I, yeah. think I, I think they'll bring in players as well. I think the restructuring of the contract situation is big. So Chelsea yeah. had done this eight, nine-year contracting to spread the payments out over eight, nine years. So these huge fees they could do. No mo. Gone. Five years is the no maximum bueno. they're allowed in the Premier League. So five yeah. years is the maximum contract length, which means they now have to possibly look at getting rid of players, which they're doing, in mm -hmm. order to bring in some. I did see a Chelsea fan on Twitter complain that they were becoming a selling club, um, which they couldn't be <laughs> further from. <laughs> His exact word, when Ampadu signed for Leeds, the exact term are, oh, another player goes out. We're just turning into a crap selling mid-table size like you spent when 600 million pounds. Buying stuff. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah. They have to get rid of players. But... That's that's hilarious. I think Bochettino will do okay. Yeah, um, I think top four might be beyond their I think reach he closes this season. The gap, I think top six, and then maybe again the following year. Give, yeah, if he's if he's given time. But this has been the problem with Chelsea. Give Graham Potter twelve months, and he'll get his style across. They won't give you that long. They that that is a squad. When you look at what they've gotten rid of, what they have, and who they're buying, mm. it's mid table kind of. Stuff on Kunku unproven, Jackson unproven, everyone they sold very proven to varying degrees and varying levels of success. But they had 40 first team players last season, they did, but they're getting rid of a lot of big name players, and I don't think they've replaced them with big name players. And a lot of other teams are going to strengthen in a way mm -hmm. that they haven't. Um, I think they're probably going to struggle 
for top four. I think if they get into the top six, they'll be reasonably okay with yeah. that. But Todd Booley seems to be a very impatient man. And they, but given what's come out and what's gone in, I don't think they can realistically think they can compete with United, no, City, so. Liverpool. Not unless they have a very Arsenal, strong end to the window. But they might have um, enough there. I mean, it could just be a case of, and as, as Potter did say and Lampard said it, the standards just weren't good enough last year. The fitness yeah. wasn't as good as it should have been. Yeah. A good preseason. But did, I mean, you named the back line there. That's a strong. It's yeah, strong, strong back line if they're fit. Um, Silva's another year older. Um, Reese James needs to stay fit. Fofan is currently injured. Chilwell's always injured. Chiloba, is he good enough all the time? Who knows? Baddy Ashley still finding his feet yeah. there. Yeah. Um, Colwell's still young. Cucurella has, for all intents and purposes, not been a success. Yeah. Um, even by Chelsea fans' uh, standards. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that. A misfiring Sterling, Lukaku and Aubameyang gone. Ziyech failed his medical. They can't find a buyer. Um, the only real kind they of ray of light. They've tried to sign haven't they? And, and Caicedo, no. yeah. They've, I think they might have put in a 70 million bid. Turned down. Enzo Fernandez is kind of the shining light. Um, very expensive. Mudrick, very expensive. Sterling, not hitting the form he used here's to have. The, here's the question. A lot of work on that team. I have a question on the, the, the long contract that Chelsea do. We could do mm. a whole series of episodes on Chelsea. If you're someone in 22, 23, and someone offers you an eight-year contract, on massive wages that Genzo Fernandez has got. Sure. Right? Huge contract. Do you care anymore? Because like you can sit that contract out. You're gonna be 30 when that contract is done. And you're gonna get you there's no incentive on you to read I mean two or three year contract you're gonna to have to kind of play for your contract because at the end of three years you're still in your prime other clubs you know you want to get attracted by other clubs or be a mainstay in the club you're at you've got an eight-year contract you're like but my career's gonna be nearly finished it's a subjective anyway. thing but i i it can't be denied that if you're offered a mega deal like that where you know you're Just financially you set for life it has to affect your hunger i think the only thing that comes in and makes things difficult is if another player is brought in to compete for your place but then if you do that you contract. you're under contract however if you do that as a club you're then devaluing the player when you need to get rid of them and then you have to take an even bigger hit because they're on such massive wages, which is what's happening with United Maguire. And bear in mind, mm. they're paying off that trans a huge transfer fee in installments over the eight years of that contract. Yeah. So he could be gone and you're still paying for him. Or you do a Barcelona and you're not paying him. Like De Jong and all these other Forcing guys. So you, you just don't know. It's it, it's been what I hope to see is a lot more incentivized contracts where the games you play, instead of it being, oh, we'll give you a gold bonus where it's like in a sales job where your commissions is up to 50 percent of mm -hmm. what your end of the, what your take-home pay is where the, the the minutes you play the games you play and the goals you score or the tackles you make or whatever your kpi is for the particular position you're in and um, that has to be the main deciding factor on at least 50 percent of your pay and you'd assume champions league bonuses as well for qualifying for this all that kind of jazz but i think it needs to be a larger chunk of the paycheck as opposed to this is your paycheck and We'll give you a few nice freebies when we reach goals. I, I think that's going to change when you look at the state of the finances of a lot of clubs. I think they're going to have to start making some adjustments. But again, when you've got the likes of Saudi and PSG and other clubs like that, they'll say, we'll give you the money anyway. We anyway, don't care. That's true. That's what you're up against. So tough. That's true. Um, that's pretty much it from the football talk. Yeah. Before we wrap up, because we're, we're getting there at time. Mm. Um, you want to talk about Deli Ali. I think we all should talk about I think about you Deli did Ali. as well. Yeah. yeah, I really do. Just, yeah. There's a lot of stuff in this. I... I I, I understand the the issues. I didn't realize he'd gone. I, I knew he had issues with his father. I knew that was mm. there because he refused to have his name on the Ali on the back yeah. of the shirt. He wanted Delhi instead because he didn't want to be associated with, with, with the man anymore. And there was issues there. I didn't know the extent to the damage that had been done to the to the kid because you look at how well his career started with MK Don't we? But but loaned out to MK Dons. Mm. He comes into Spurs side and, and you know initially you think this is a fantastic player. I mean, England Ferguson wanted him. Said he's Everyone, a United player. Get that kid. Yeah, coming in international for, for a long, long time. Quality midfielder who can score goals. Great eye for goal as well. And then everything just kind of just went. But he did that for two or three years. It wasn't like he got hot for a season and no, it was he like, had it for a couple oh, years. another overhyped English player no. that just seems to kind of fizzle away. It was two or three years he was doing it. What did you think of the interview? I thought it was very revealing. Yeah. I felt a lot of sympathy for him. And I liked how... He was getting out in front of the fact that I don't want people feeling sorry for me and I don't want people thinking I'm looking for attention. Yeah. Um, but he's at his wits end. He, the guy became a meme. He he he, all, he, all, he almost took the mantle from Ravel Morrison, who was at United as this 
problematic you know, young player. Problematic young player. Well, you didn't really know. Ravel Morrison, it was quite clear to see that he hung around with very different kinds of people he shouldn't have been hanging around with from a very young age and was influenced probably by people he shouldn't have been. Yeah. But with Deli Ali, he did get, like, Ravel Morrison didn't step up and do it for three years in the Premiership. It was just this kind of wasted talent that never got to really flower. But Deli Ali, I mean, he was a rose garden and it was it was great to see and then it was so everyone knew he could do it and consistently it wasn't just a bright flash that just extinguished just as quickly um and then yeah it was a shame and then people kind of scratched their head as a hubris arrogance laziness does he care anymore is he making too much money is it money yeah that was the one. and it came and it re revealed it it's I, not I, they're I, human beings they're not machines yeah and you and we look People have all made a judgment on Deli Ali over the last five years. I have. People have all said things. I have. Without knowing the full And we don't. You, I mean, you can't turn around with hindsight and say, oh, well, they shouldn't have said that. Like, you don't know. Maybe going forward in the future, everyone should be a little bit more tolerant, ask a few more questions, and maybe yeah. look at the person behind the player. Because there is a human being behind that as well. Yeah. And I think, as men, we do an awful job of talking about what's going on in our lives. We do an mm -hmm. awful job of talking about how we're feeling. Vulnerability is a superpower, not a problem. Yeah. And that when we talk about how we feel and we talk about it, when we are, and we are vulnerable. And I thought Deli Ali was super vulnerable in that. And so was Gary Neville. Gary Neville was brilliant. He handled it perfectly. He I, was brilliant. I'm going to be very honest. As a footballer, and as a, obviously as a lead fan, I couldn't stand Gary Neville. And yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He made my, like, Bruno Fernandez and me have that relationship. He was our dose. I crawl, my skin crawled. You'd want him in the trenches, which absolutely. Don't. Since he's become a pundit, I always, the first couple of years he was doing it, I was like, he's right, isn't he? He's right. He's right. Couldn't disagree with what he was saying. Bang on the money. I think he's far more detailed sometimes than character is. They're both, I think they're both very good. But I think Gary Neville's very good. And to do that interview and put himself in that position, because he would have criticized that Deli Ali as well over the last couple of years. Absolutely. His job. Yeah. His job. But I thought to be able to sit down in front of everybody, because he was in front of everybody, that camera is mm. everybody. And to be as vulnerable as he was, to talk about it, to allow himself to be emotional and to not ask for that to be cut out afterwards. Mm. To just be that, I thought it deserves a huge amount of respect from everybody. Now, there will be a couple of idiots who'll think, oh, you're a man, push it down and be a man. And I describe them as idiots because okay. it's an idiotic way of looking at things. Yeah. He had some serious problems. The money doesn't make it easier. And as no. Biggie said, make it harder. more money, more problems. That's it. And it does. I am joking, obviously, with that bit, but it does it makes it more difficult and you look at these clubs because there's so a weight of expectation that you don't you don't deserve to feel like that you get compared to other jobs where you shouldn't be the yeah. like you see it i think oh well there's people in the health service are you're in a court it's a different industry you chose to go into that industry different they chose to be different footballers. everything different yeah. everything it's like someone getting to it you know well he's a ceo of a company he's earning 400 grand a year he doesn't deserve that money no but he you get the job and you demand the salary that you're qualified for and you deserve. You dictate and that. For every one of him, there's a million people that try to get that job. I didn't get it. Didn't you got it. it. It's this thing about going, well, you're lucky to have a job. No, you're not. You're the best person at that moment yeah. and you got it on. And Deli Ali's in that bracket of the money he's on is money he's asking for because based on my contract, based on my potential, based on where I'm going, mm. this is what I'm worth. This is what the, the market... He showed he was worth that. Of course he did. And he deserves it. And But it brings huge pressure. And if you're anyway kind of suffering mentally at that point anyway, that can just be the tipping point. It takes one or two comments and I go back to social media as well and people need to realise this. People do go after people on social media. Footballers never had the exposure to people that they do now. Oh, yeah. Good and bad. But the bad can be consistent That's a double attacks. Sword. Yeah, yeah, consistent attacks from all platforms for people. So for me, I just thought absolutely fair play to him. I hope it's the cathartic moment that he needs. I think he's going to get all the goodwill in the world next year. I think an entire nation, regardless of club, him are willing that guy yeah. to do well. And I think he needs Everton as much as Everton needs him. Right and I hope it's a it's a marriage that yeah. does really, really well. And I, I wish him all the best and, uh, and fair play to him. So, yeah, thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's the end of episode two. We're back next week with episode three. We'll cover the final three teams in the Premier League and have more of a discussion about what's going on in the Premier League. There have been some VAR rule changes as well that we're going to yeah. go through next week in more detail as well. So we'll get mm -hmm. into all the what's happening in the Premier League, what's changing before the season kicks off. And then when the season does kick off, we'll have a regular review preview of all the games as well. So yeah. as we said, we're going to try and keep this as, ob as objective as possible, it, which hopefully a Leeds and a Manchester United fan in the same room can, can do. <laughs> I, think, I think we can. I think we can. I think we'll be okay. Um, yeah. And all of this is going to improve over time. So look, the more we grow, the better it gets. It'll, yeah. it'll, it'll get better. So just those who support us at the start, thank you very much. We really, really appreciate million. it. Yeah, and, um, thank you.
Fingers crossed this keeps going in the right direction. 100%, yeah. Have a great week. See you next time. See you on the next one. Bye.